the wall behind me is a representation of Philip during the Second World War. And when you think there's over 1,000 personnel stationed here, and we've only managed to find or trace about half a dozen, and all the rest have been forgotten. When the Luftwaffe came over in the evening, the piece was disturbed by the anti-aircraft uh, battery, which was the other side of the railway line. They not only made a lot of noise, they sent all the shrapnel down over the, over the airfield, which some, sometimes wounded um, pilots and crew who were supposed to be in an air raid shelter but slept in the huts. And the first thing in the morning, they had to, had to sweep the runways to rid the, uh, all the concrete of all the shrapnel. Yeah, my grandparents remember um, a chocolate factory being blown up as well in Norwich and rushing to get obviously the chocolate because it was on rations. The chocolate factories, obviously, chocolate was on rations and the chocolate factory in Norwich, which we used to have a massive one, was blown up and everyone was panicking to get chocolate and stuff off the streets. So. And I hope that people have remembered what happened 65 years ago. I was only two at the time, but uh, you know, we've got photographs and people need to remember. What is not commonly known that from Barkingside to Fairlop, the Hainault station, there are about 150 tank taps. They're not technically part of the uh, RAF station, but they were used for the defence of London as anti-tank um, devices. So we pray for peace wherever there is conflict and bloodshed in our world. I'm sure we're all aware that during the two world wars, that aviation was a particularly dangerous uh, occupation to have. They fought in the rain, they fought in the mud, the poppies red, the colour of blood. A nation who um, forgets its past has very little future. But... As it is written, the Lord will guard you from all harm, he will guard your life, the Lord will guard your going and coming, now and forevermore. When they said that you were going down south, and you're going on Spitfires, oh, you, you could have jumped over the moon. It was wonderful, and um, and the and the aircraft came up to came up to your wishes. It was a it was a boy's aircraft, really. I think I was born in the wrong generation because I would love to have been a Spitfire pilot in the last war, but uh, I wasn't around. But my father was, and he served with pride in the Eighth Army, and I'm, and I'm uh, an honour to wear his medals today at today's ceremony. But it's lovely to see all these people here, and lovely to see all these boys that were hanging on the fence, you know, when we came. <laughs> I think messages should be sent out to the young generation, especially what the Second World War was about. It's one of the few wars, I think, that has ever taken place where there was actually a point in fighting it. It was to rid the world of... Uh, of the barbarians that were known as Nazis and the young generation unfortunately do not know about this and it is up to those generations that fought in the war and those are the children of those that fought in the war like myself to actually inform and teach the younger generations of what the Second World War was all about. I know wars are not the best things that one wants to live through and fight through but that was a war that had to be fought and uh, thank God we got the, the, we got the right result. I'm delighted to be the patron. I'm also fully supporting the memorial, the runway, and every other aspect of the work done. I think this is part of our heritage, part of our history, and needs protecting. I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. I really am. Uh, being next service. If we forget the past, then we risk it being repeated in the future. This is our heritage. And if we see the devotion, the fact of so many people gave up their lives, brave people gave up their lives so we can enjoy the freedom we do today, it should never ever be forgotten by us or future generations to come. So it's very important for young people to see this as well. We are remembering those who fought with the Commonwealth forces from Canada, from Australia, from the British Indian Army and from many others alongside our country. We remember those who, not just serving from Fairlock, but serving like my dad did in Burma. I flew with Bomber Command during the war, uh, completing 30 bombing missions 
and I was so very pleased to see the Canadian gentleman here as uh, my skipper was Eric Nielsen, uh, the, who became Deputy Prime Minister of Canada in 1986. Unfortunately, he died a couple of years ago, and I was and due to go to Canada to visit the International Airport in the Yukon, which is named after him. Now, I'm also very pleased on this day to read in the uh, newspaper, the Daily Express, that a million pound has been donated towards the new Bomber Command Memorial and uh, in memory of the 55,573 men who uh, perished in the uh, Second World War. Now, um, I am here today um, with, with a great feeling of remembrance because one always remembers the boys that didn't survive. The next person on the, on the foot is Alan Otto who was uh, Alan's, uh, Harold's best friend and he got uh, burned alive in Algeria when Harold was a POW. The next person is, is uh, Godfrey Alan McCoy from New Zealand. I've sort of adopted him because he died from Fairlock about two weeks after I was born and he, he, he was lost over St Omer and the sad thing about him that no one actually knows what happened, he just disappeared from view.